Hello and welcome to my Learn With Me Mini Freak series. This is episode 2, Basic Oscillators. So first, what is a Learn With Me series? A Learn With Me series is a series where you follow my end-to-end -end process trying to get the best out of a synthesizer. In this case, it is the Arturia Mini Freak. So far, you've seen me react and give you my first impressions to the sound and the overall build quality, and I've talked a little through generally how the synthesizer works, the paradigm that it follows, and I did a little comparison with the Hydrosynth Explorer, which I think is an obvious um, contemporary synthesizer to this that you may be choosing between. One thing I didn't mention, which is probably worth mentioning, is Minifreak also comes with a license for Minifreak V, which is a VST version of the synthesizer, which this synthesizer can sync with. That gives you some pretty interesting possibilities for when using a DAW, you can create patches on the hardware and have them directly modify the software instance, and you can make multiple instances of a particular patch. You can layer and you get a pseudo multi-tombrality by way of a door. Interesting feature, but that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is looking at the basics of the oscillator section, which I introduced last time. So let's dive straight in. First, I'm going to press Shift Erase. I'm going to go preset init. So we have an init patch. What constitutes an init patch? Well, an init patch has a gate-like envelope in place. You hear sharp attack, sharp, sharp release, and it has got Oscillator 1 turned up, oscillator 2 turned down. For now, we can see that oscillator 1 is in the basic wave type, and that's exactly where we're going to leave it for now. Rather than spend a lot of time talking about the different oscillator types at this early stage, I'm going to demonstrate the synthesizer only using the basic wave type. This gives you a feel of this synthesizer when used as a fairly standard subtractive synth. Going forward, we will then dive into some of the more um, deep and complex algorithms that are made available to you. So how does the synthesizer work? Well, first, we have the type knob, and we have a number of other parameters. In this case, the wave is called morph, so let's listen. So I think we're going from something like a square to something like a saw to something like a triangle. So the tombra knob is giving us something that's a bit like a pulse whip. The shape parameter is giving us a sub oscillator. So, what we have here then is an oscillator that allows us to morph between waveforms, us to do some wave shaping on that waveform, and gives us a sub oscillator. As I mentioned before, we have two oscillators. So, let's turn down the first, let's select the second oscillator, which is set to basic wave, and turn it up. So now we're using the second oscillator for basic wave. So let's pick a shape. Let's go back to the first oscillator. Turn the volume up. Let's detune the second oscillator a little. This is going in semitones. If I hold down shift, uh, sorry, if I press the knob, I have fine tuning. So I'm going to tune one of them up a little bit, one of them down a little bit. So I think we can hear that fairly typical detuned oscillator kind of analog synth sound. Rather than just leaving it like that, even though I haven't discussed the other sections, I'll quickly um, make a envelope for us to use. So 
fairly bright, fairly bold. You might say it has a bit of a digital character, but I think that's part of the charm of this synthesizer. I wouldn't say that it's trying to be a virtual analog synthesizer. It's trying to be a unique and um, fun synthesizer, and I think it does a good job at that. Final thing I wanted to discuss in this episode, beyond what those basic waveforms do, are the different modes that we have available in the envelope section. So what we have access to then is mono. So mono. As you'd expect, monophonic playing. Next poly. Polyphonic, six voices. Now I mentioned the paraphonic mode that this has access to. So paraphonic mode in this case is going to give us 12 part paraphony, but you may notice a timbral difference. Suddenly it sounds a lot thinner. Why does it sound thinner? Because in paraphonic mode, we have 12 part paraphony, but we only have one oscillator. So oscillator two will be disabled in this mode and we're only hearing oscillator one. What we get paid back in doing that is, that's 10 notes. So we have access to 12 parts. And I think that's a pretty compelling feature here. And next we have a monophonic, but monophonic unison. So this is giving us a stack of voices here. And um, all in all, a pretty compelling uh, offering. If we hold shift and press mode, you see that I've switched to polyphonic unison mode and paraphonic unison mode. So we have that same unison sound, but not just played monophonically, we can play polyphonic unison, paraphonic unison. From my perspective, I think those are quite, um, quite a diverse set of offerings, and they're just about everything that you would expect from a synthesizer of this type. I think that's all I'm going to do today. I think I've demonstrated the basic waveform. As we come back, we're going to work our way through the synthesis path and demonstrate the deeper features of the synthesizer. But for now, I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining me, and Goodbye.